I want to shoot a tutorial, but I need a model. Okay, but only if it's for the Brenizer method. Perfect. Let's teach you guys the Brenizer method in Photoshop. Ooh, fourth wall break. Man, I'm like the Deadpool of YouTube videos. Before we get started with Photoshop, there's a couple things you're going to want to do when shooting the model. First things first, set your focus on the model and then set your camera to manual. Take a picture of your model, including their entire body, and start taking pictures all around them, overlapping a small portion from the previous shot. You're going to probably need about 12 to 15 shots at least to get good coverage. The more shots you get and the wider you go, the larger your panorama will be in the end. All right, once you've taken all your pictures and you're happy with them, what you're gonna do is open them up on your computer and you're gonna select all the pictures that are involved in the panoramic shot. Right click and open with Adobe Photoshop. Now, if you took the pictures raw, they're gonna open in the camera raw. And if that's the case, you just click one of the images on the side here, Command or Control A to select all and click open images. Photoshop's going to open up all the images, and once it does, you're going to go to the menu, go to File, Automate, Photo Merge. And you'll get a pop-up that looks like this. And you're going to want to keep Auto selected, Blend Images Together, and Vignette Removal if your camera has some vignetting on it. Then you're going to click Add Open Files. This will generate all the open files in Photoshop, and from there, you're just going to click OK. Now the next part takes Photoshop a little while, so I'll skip forward and show you guys what I already did. Here's my panoramic portrait from the shoot. Once you're happy with it, you just crop it however you want. And at this point, you can start editing. I know you're gonna be tempted to edit the portrait at first, but what you're gonna wanna do is stitch everything together first, and then once you've got your final composition, then go back and edit. The file dimensions end up being pretty large, so for print, they're great, because you can print them well over poster size without any quality loss. Well, there you have it, ladies and gents, the Brenizer method. If you want to see the final product, go check it out on my Instagram. I'll leave the link in the description below. And if you guys are going to try it out, definitely tag me in your posts so I can check them out as well. Oh, and if you found it useful, maybe hit that like button, let me know in the comments, and subscribe if you're not already so I can catch you guys in the next one. Later.